I do quite like to imitate this bird, actually, that's absolutely correct. It is our, our last segment before we head off towards the fireside chat. It's getting a little bit dark and it's been, well, it's been positively ominous all day long. Those are the Hardy Dar Ibis, made famous around the country because those who wake up on Saturday mornings with a pounding head from the excesses of the night before dislike them vociferously and intensely. And I will tell you a story quickly about the Hardy Dar Ibis, which sounds like this. Ha! Ha! Now, if you wake up with a pounding head on a Saturday morning after an excessive Friday night, hearing that at five o'clock in the morning as it sits above your roof, ha! Ha! is just very unpleasant. Now, my story is of the late, great Eddie Kaizen, who used was a South African Formula One uh, driver, champion at one stage. I don't know if he was a champion, but he was a driver and he's a big businessman and philanthropist in this country. And he thought that they were vermin. He thought that they were... Um, <laughs> He thought that they were exotic, and they're not actually. They're actually relatively threatened species, is the humble Hardy Dar Ivis. And Eddie I took on a game drive once, and he expressed to me that he had at one stage, and was no longer doing this, purchased himself a small tutu rifle, which he used to lie on the floor in the mornings, part the curtains very slightly on a Saturday morning, and aim at these Hardy Dars. And he potted one or two of them, and then he phoned up the birding guy, the big birding guy that you see in the book that I use often, phoned him up and said, listen, I've potted two of these things, I don't suppose you want them. And apparently this birding guy absolutely lost his mind. His name was Ken Newman. He said, are you absolutely crazy? These things are threatened species. You can't go shooting them in the morning just because you wake up with a headache because you've had an excessive Friday night. How dare you? And thoroughly chastised, his tutu went away and all the hardy dars were welcome in his garden thenceforth. And that is my Hardy Dar story. So it is a very beastly noise to hear if you were trying to sleep, but I quite like it. And they get when they're little, they sit on the roof next to their parents and they go, ha, 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 ha. They don't get the full blooded sort of, uh, it's a vicious sort of ear piercing contralto that they have. Goodbye, you're safe here. Well, unless you get eaten by an African hawk eagle, in which case you will not be safe. <laughs> and Ch Chantelle in the final control makes a good point. She says she thinks the reason they're threatened is because they make such a beastly noise. Uh, she might have a point, actually, except that I think that they're threatened throughout their range, not just in the uh, ignorant, ignorant capital or, or ignorant reaches of Cape Town and Johannesburg, where, of course, wildlife is not a big thing. Although there are many very nice garden birds in both places. And they... <laughs> and Louise in the final control would like to know where else they occur. Louise, they are very widely distributed throughout South Africa. I think you'll find anywhere where the rainfall is in excess of around about 350 millimetres, I think you will find hardy dar ibis thrive. All of our major cities, I don't think you'll find them anywhere near the Karoo, but you'll find them all the way down the coast. Certainly when my parents live in Kenton-on-Sea, they make a big noise on the roof there. All the way in Cape Town they make a noise, Johannesburg and Pretoria. So anywhere basically where you have rainfall over plus minus 350 millimetres, which is one and a half inches. Right, that is the Hardy Dar Ibis.